In my hands I have a mystery box which you might not recognize because it happens to be the very first of its kind. I follow Universe of Marker on Instagram, which used to be the US Copic Marker Instagram. And I saw they were offering a blind box for the month of January. So I pre-ordered this a month ago and I just looked back at how much I paid for this. And it's not one of the cheaper ones. It was 30 bucks for the box. And then I also had to pay 825 for shipping, but this came inside another box. So I'm hoping they can cut down on the shipping costs if they continue to do mystery boxes. But I thought it would still be fun to jump into it because markers are one of my favorite traditional mediums. And so I'm hoping I'll like everything in this box. Although I'm really crossing my fingers that there are no water-based markers. Anyway, I guess we should open up and uh, find out what's inside though, shall we? Gosh. Did you see that? All right, we're opening a new box. This is kind of fun. The challenge is to create using only what is provided in the box. You can use some or all of the items, but try not to use anything else. So does that mean they might include a pencil and stuff too? I have absolutely no idea what's in here. There hasn't been like any hints, except that it's by marker the universe. So I'm hoping for markers. <laughs> All right, let's pull one thing at a time. This appears to be a mechanical pencil, 0.5, and it's marked on HB. I already see a marker. <laughs> this is the sketch marker brush. So it has a brush on, ooh, look at that color. Brush on one side and a chisel on the other. One of the few brands I have not tried yet. Oh, that one had a smell. <laughs> All right, also we have, oh, classic jelly roll. Draw on my skin to bug a few people. This one's a funny shape. The, oh dear, can I even read this? Graphit B. Oh, so there's a brush here. Oh, and fine point on the other. And this is the color 8112. I didn't even look at what color this sketch marker was. See miss. So there's the website that I bought the box on. Oh, ugh, I don't really like these. <laughs> we have two brush marker pros by the brand Karen. These I believe are pigment or ink based. So it'll be interesting to use those with, I assume these two are alcohol based, neon green and warm gray. You can see they have a brush on the end. Oop, I still see some more markers. We have another Graphit B, this time in the color 8150. My favorite color. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> another Graphit B, this time in the color 8118. Dig back in this box. I kind of like how the paper engulfs the whole box. So I kind of have to dig in there. Okay, we got another. Oh wait, this one's different. These two are brush marker pros. This is a metallic permanent marker, Karen Deco brush. I have never tried those. I wonder. So it appears to just be metallic. Right, I see another marker. <laughs> it's the marker box. What am I expecting? Okay, it's another sketch marker. Oh, this one is not a brush. So it's... So this one has a fine point on one end, chisel on the other, and it's also a very pretty green. This one's called... This one is this one is called Green Shadow. You can kind of see this one had a black barrel, whereas this one had a gray barrel. And they say they are alcohol. And they. Oh my gosh! I <laughs> mean, his favorite toy is a paper plate, by the way. Yeah, I just spoiled your secret. You don't like any of the fancy toys I buy you. So, oh, another Karen pen, brush marker pro. These are really cool if you like mix them with water, if I remember. This one's in the color olive green. Keep that with these. I'm seeing a lot of green here. <laughs> I wonder if we'll do like a landscape or, I don't know, something green. Here we have just a little advertisement for the Karen markers. How to use your brush marker pro. Should be stored cap and the tip facing up. Really? I wouldn't have thought that. And they show some of the ways you can use them. You can actually touch the tips and use them to blend colors. If you paint on a non-absorbent surface, you can mix them together, kind of like paint. If I remember correctly, they're a little difficult to use when it comes to like layering them, but we'll see. I'll, I'll take another look at them. Let's see, is this another pencil? The Artisto Geo Pen Pro, another 0.5 millimeter. This one's got an eraser. Oh, I'll add an eraser too. <laughs> Sorry, didn't notice. Stickers coming off, so I'm just going to let that happen. Ah, pretty. There's a lot in this box. I mean, I paid a lot too, so. Oh, there's also a little advertisement pamphlet for the graphite markers. So are these alcohol? Yeah, it looks like they are. Put this one by the toilet. There's a lot to sift through. <laughs> I don't see the graphite bees on here, which is what we have. Oh, and they actually sell extra nibs if you go through a nib. More thing. Reach into the black abyss. Oh, fine liners. Oh, also by the brand Graphit. 
So these are the fine liners. We have a 003, a 0.1, a 0.3, and a 0.5. There's a lot of literature on these pens. So it looks like they are water-based, so they should work really well with our alcohol-based markers. Pretty good. I've never had a bad fine liner. I feel like they all last very similar. Even if you buy the expensive ones, they still, I don't know, work as well as a bad one, in my opinion. So I love all fine liners. All right, so this is everything, 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 everything. <laughs> Kept its shape. I'm actually really pleasantly surprised because this is all supplies I will use, it, especially the fine liners and like the pencils. Brush pens. Let's just swatch them. Let me grab a sketchbook. Now they didn't include any paper, so I'm wondering what they meant by don't use anything outside this box. Am I just supposed to draw on the other markers? Am I supposed to draw on the box? That's not a bad idea. Ooh, Geopen Pro. <laughs> I feel like art supplies just put that on there to look more important than they are. Okay, we gotta try the sketch markers. I feel like I've heard good things about these. This one is not a brush marker. <gasps> look at that pastel color! This is the cap. Ooh, brush marker. It looks even lighter. It's green mist. Ooh, that is a squishy brush. A little on the squishy side for me. Appreciate the pigment. So for the Graphit B, we have 8150. Oh, I forgot it's like a little bullet nib. I have never heard of this brand. Okay, so it's a brush. Oh, that's a little bit of a stiffer brush. Ooh, I don't, the quality of the ink does not seem there to me. It's like kind of patchy. I don't know if you can see it. That one looks nicer. But that first one had, gave me like Crayola consistency and <laughs> I don't want Crayola consistency. Personally, okay? <laughs> Not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Another pro. <laughs> I'm trying to see how the ink pools on those. They don't work the same as like an alcohol-based marker. A lot juicier. But that is neon. I wasn't just expecting that. The deco. <gasps> okay, if that's opaque and it looks good, like on this toned paper. <gasps> oh, I love you. <laughs> that's beautiful. I want to get this in more colors. Zero point three. Ooh, now that's kicking it up a notch. <laughs> and then point five, probably my go-to actually. The other thing I'm noticing is these colors don't really look that nice next to each other. So I'm a little nervous. I don't know if you're supposed to mix these with water or rubbing alcohol. So I guess we could try both. Grab that neon green. So I'll do a little water. That is like fluorescent. That's like out of this world. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'll just dip in this and mix it. The other thing with rubbing alcohol is it's going to dry very, very fast. Okay, that does look like it's working better though. And then the ones that were water is picking up what I already laid down. So that's something I'm also going to take into consideration. Oh, now that that uh, deco brush dried, it's not quite as popping. It dulled out a little bit, but still has like a bit of a sheen to it. But let me start sketching in my sketchbook. Big surprise. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the amount of stuff, but I'm not entirely impressed with the curation. Like, I don't feel like these colors really suit each other. I, it said when I ordered the box that, like, colors may vary, so I assume other people got different colors, which might account for why these don't look too hot together. They just kind of grabbed green ones, maybe. And we'll see how I feel when I actually start using the supplies together. These blend together when you, like... Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Put them on the same piece of paper. Yeah, I think I just need to kind of experiment with them together, see what works and what doesn't. I'm using a reference from JC Lion Decker, one of my favorite artists. Kind of copying for this warm up. Gotta work on the face a little bit more, maybe. Came up on my Pinterest board and I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's a really nice pose. I like that. Throw some colors in here. Maybe play with the tones. I'll change the outfit up. Should probably show you the reference. <laughs> That's the one. I'll link it in the. On my Pinterest page, so it's easier to find too. <laughs> this reference doesn't really include a lot of green, so we're gonna have to make the best of it. Let's see, our light tones, these are our light tones. We have some mid tones, and then for the darkest, we have olive, which is this guy. For light tones, we have these two. 
light in the face. I'm using my own kneaded eraser, but I'm also using my own sketchbook. So okay, let's go in and use the fine liners. I'm going to use maybe a point one sketchy lines out of the fine liner, which will help make it look even looser than sometimes line art ends up usually. <laughs> And with the finer point ones, we have more room to be sketchy. Kind of cool. Kind of like how this face turned out. A little less my style. But I might be able to incorporate some of these things into my future drawings. That's what's cool about doing studies on, like, really good artists, you know? <laughs> you can kind of pinpoint some things that you might want to adjust in your own. Why do I feel like her face looks like the teacher on recess without glasses? Uh, my brain's going. So let me just try and color that. We'll start with like a base of a light tone. What was our light? Oh no, this one was the chisel. Oh, well, we'll make it work. I'm gonna try layering that up with uh, this 8112. <laughs> Gotta love that color. Oh, that's really green. Yeah, these sketch markers were way bluer. All right, that looks a little dead <laughs> because I used the less saturated color to shade. It's not usually recommended unless that's an effect you're going for. <laughs> Try using a little bit more saturated color. See if I can liven it up a little. And if you're really trying to blend out markers, I recommend using the largest nib that you have on the marker because there's going to be a lot more saturation of ink there and you can move around the colors a little bit better. She's looking very aquatic to me, which is kind of inspiring me to go further in that direction. Especially since those are the colors that we have. Like she looks like a mermaid or something. I wonder if I, I haven't finished the liner here. I could probably just go full mermaid. Kind of try and fit with the theme. Go a little vintagey. Add a little liner. When I'm finished with this, I think I'll have a better grasp of how to use these supplies together. All right, that should work. To erase all the pencil now. Goodbye, beautiful sketch. I'll miss you. Blend that out the skin tone. And for the um, swimsuit thing, I think I want to use the deco brush. I haven't used that yet. Although I probably should use this as a texture. We'll have to see if we can like shade on top of it once it's dry. Let's do the deco brush. A little bit of rubbing alcohol. Add some uh, sea spots. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, look, I can add a little bit of rendering with this. Kind of just blending things out. A little bit of shadow under some of these elements. I think I would like to add some cheeks too. Oh, that worked really nice. I'm gonna have to keep that one in mind. I think this the little brush mixed with a little bit of rubbing alcohol technique really blends out the lines, but also can give me a harsh line when I'm looking for it. Very similar to alcohol-based markers, probably because I've kind of created my own over here. Cool looking leaves freehand with little flowers what was that light color <laughs> there a little freehand point i've not found a use for the little bullet yet maybe if i wanted to shade the face with less harsh lines that would work really nice but for now <laughs> i have not used it that worked really well for some little background elements that didn't distract from our character. Hair strands. Being lit by the sun. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we want to go like full mermaid. We want we obviously probably need to include the tail. And that should probably actually be on my mind <laughs> at the beginning of the sketch. So that the composition kind of incorporates it really nicely. Like what kind of top are they going to wear? I'm pretty settled on the mermaid idea though. <laughs> I think the colors we have will suit it really nice. And we gotta have a happy mermaid. <laughs> Do we want straps? Do we want strapless? Do we want... So many possibilities! And then hair. Gotta decide on some hair. Any jewelry. I think I want to worry about the pose a little. I'm gonna draw small. Bring the tail up this way. Maybe put the arms up in the hair. I feel like that's a pretty classic mermaid sort of pose. <laughs> what do I do with the arms? Worry about like the fluidity and the com composition and then we'll uh, worry about the body parts next. Oh, but then where do I put the hair? <laughs> Include that in the composition somehow. Also play with some of the tones. If we had a little ruffle on the bottom like this. Is that cute? I think it is pretty cute. Oh and we gotta include a blobfish somewhere. 
keep trying till I find something I like. Now, do I want to go with like the snake squiggly tail or like the humanoid has kneecaps tail? <laughs> and I kind of jump back and forth usually. I think my go to is more like having a knee. That's not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I just try sketching on the box. Maybe it'll change things up. Change my mental state. Maybe something kind of boring and simple is what I need. <laughs> it's got a bit of a dopey face. And by dopey, I mean like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs dopey. <laughs> it's literally what <laughs> it looks like to me. It is. I'm just not really feeling it. What to do, what to do, what to do. Maybe I just haven't found the right sketch. Or maybe I need to just stick with one a little longer. It's like hair. I feel like hair is one of the things that just isn't inspiring me. I really liked this one. This one has wonderfully long limbs. I do not. I was not graced with that. <laughs> I feel like I might have redrawn this picture before. This feels familiar. Try working on this sketch again. It's floating my boat a little more. <laughs> Maybe if I keep the hair kind of curly, it'll look more beachy. <laughs> like the water and the salt and everything. I don't know. She gives me a little bit of Vanessa from the Little Mermaid vibes. It's hard to put your brain in art mode when you're just thinking about other things, but trying to use art as a way to not think about other things. So it's like, <laughs> 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 Ooh, what if it's that top that like comes in front and ties? But now the straps on the top seem too skinny. Because if we're gonna have those really thick straps at the bottom, I think we need the thicker ones at the top too. Maybe we'll go halter. Gonna take inspiration from that one. Blondfish. Aww, that's making me kind of happy. <laughs> I feel like I turned that sketch around. Back to the box. <laughs> I'm just all over the place. Oh, look at that face. It's precious. Maybe I'll just go back to this plan. <laughs> We're a little headband since so she looks kind of younger. We'll try to exaggerate that fact. I think I'm just gonna keep it simple since I'm struggling a little. My art self-esteem. <laughs> I just stick to the comfort zone. Stick to the stuff you know. A little blood for starter. It might be good to have the hair go off the edge too. Just to kind of make the illustration fill the space better. Go with that Disney mermaid tail. Throw in some uh, convenient bubbles. And I think we're, we got something here. Right. Okay, I like this. It's cute. Might be fun to color in the background too, but we will see. Lighten the sketch and add in some line art. I should actually test <laughs> the supplies on here. I'm gonna add a bow up here since there's a bow in her shirt too. Go ahead and add in some line art. 0.5. We got the big one. Just go around the whole thing. It's a really cute top. <laughs> it looks like she's like, oh, do you hear what I hear? <laughs> that was unintentional. Little blubfish. <laughs> Got a little too close to the mermaid tail, but I'll take it. Just finish up this tail and then we can start adding in some color. Uh, let's go with a pretty similar color scheme to this since we uh, put in the time over there. Let's start with the skin, which will be these guys I think. Ooh wait the colors are not quite as vibrant on this box. Although it might fade into it it might just be the alcohol drying that looks darker. We'll find out. If all the colors are tinted similarly it should still look pretty nice when it's done. Oh yeah see that's way more vibrant than down here where I just put it. Okay yeah we're, we're, we're doing all right. Oh what happened? <laughs> I think I used this for the hair piece in this one. We'll do like a shine thing. I like this color. It's very seaweedy to me. Oh, that would have been pretty for a hair color too. Not gonna lie. And I think I used olive green for the hair. These look so vibrant even on this 
trying to include some like highlights to just break up this really dark color and I might be able to fill that in with uh, one of the markers once it's dry be a little less out there and harsh not sure what color to do the tail probably the tail bit the end will be the hair color but we'll find out I used this for the top here let's do the same thing oh it's so opaque I forgot can I go around there and figure out where I need it add a little shading and then maybe those freckle things too I like this because it's a lot more saturated than some of the other markers that I have so it works really well with this skin tone and it's a little bit more blue as well so if I tried to shade it with some of the other colors it'd end up looking a lot more green oh yeah that's that, that makes a significant difference I think we'll go ahead and color in the bloodfish the skin tone we picked yeah you could there's a good example of how different that marker looks when you first put it down whereas when it dries fill in some of these highlights that aren't quite necessary there's something lighter maybe this that's better all right now here's my little predicament i could use this which i used for the bandana to do these cool seaweedy background elements or i can use this to color in the tail although i could use it for the tail add some shading to the tail and then still use this for the background that's the other option yeah, let's go with it. This color is light enough also that I might be able to layer it with something if I'm not liking it. Let's just go ahead and color everything in. It's probably gonna look real patchy on this cardboard, but <laughs> it's ain't marker paper, okay? Add some uh, scale texture. Mm -mm. These colors just don't look that great next to each other. <laughs> and I'm probably not implementing them quite well, but I'll go with it. There's no coming back from this. Here we go! That separated the tones pretty well. I could probably just use that same green to add, you know, mermaid texture. Ooh, where'd that tangent come from? Here, maybe if we like color in a couple of them, kind of hide that. <laughs> Oops. Oh, we can use some of the other markers to put in other ones too. Might use this one to add a little shading too. All right, now I think there's definitely enough leeway to be able to add some of those shapes in here. Oh, oh wait, nope. <laughs> If I want to add some freckles, I could probably just do that with this bearish. Boop, 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 boop. Make sure these dry before I put my hand over them because this is the juicy pen. Some ocean particles. <laughs> Mermaid using only the supplies in this box. I didn't even use my own paper. I mean, obviously I sketched some stuff, but you know, I'll finish the illustration. I completed the challenge. Biggest problem with like drawing on something like this is like, now what do I do with it? I guess I should. Thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun with this box. I love markers. <laughs> and the cool thing about markers, even if you get brands like these, you can use them with all your other brands of markers. <laughs> so it's like you're always adding to the collection. Unless you get a marker that you literally already own, which I surprisingly didn't do. Unless I might all own this, this olive green. You know, pencils and like liners. You can never have too many of those. So I'm actually kind of happy with this box. I'd like to see them find a way to bring that shipping cost down. Maybe even nix it altogether. But other than that, I really like this box. Even if art isn't coming as easily for me right now. But I'm not going to force art to work for me. I want it to be my friend. So I think we're doing just fine. <laughs> That's right. That's like all this stuff was in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week. And I hope you have a delicious evening. Bo waffles. Bye.